Don't let tomorrow's solutions get stuck on today's obstacles. Help move what matters at Iowa State. Iowa State students have big ideas. My name is Cam Schaefer. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Spock Sanctuary, which is a exotic companion animal rescue, and we provide other services in education and nutrition. And it all started with a little help from cyclones like you. Welcome in to the very first live edition of Kicking It. Now, why are we doing this live? Because we can. That's really, that's pretty much it. So uh, we are Kicking It. This is on Psychophatic. If you are tuned in and you weren't expecting that, but I apologize. If you are expecting that, welcome to the show. Um, we're going to be getting into Iowa State. Uh, obviously, their se basketball season ended. Both men's and women's seasons are now over officially, which is sad. Uh, but portal season is upon us. The roster is both rosters are kind of under construction. So we're going to get into that. Then we also have a debate, which I think it's actually really why Grant wanted Grant. It was Grant's idea to go live because we have a debate at the end of the show, which I can't believe is actually a thing. I can't believe that you're like, so your heels are so dug in. I just don't know. Okay. Any, we'll I've, get to I've, that. I've, yeah, we'll get to that. So we're, stick with us for probably 20 to 50 minutes. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, anyway, we are always, as always, brought to you by Kelderman Manufacturing, Kelderman.com. Uh, if you want some cool stuff that is going to be, whether it's laser cut or whether that's going to be heavy machinery, whether that's going to be with a trailer or you got uh, a man cave thing that you want cut, Kelderman.com. Uh, Grant, how are you doing now that the season's over? Dude, watching that game, I was upset. I, I'm, I'm very biased, obviously. Not. I know that I have, have, I'm drunk on the Iowa State Kool-Aid. Iowa State played bad, and they still lost Illinois. Had by Iowa three? State, yeah, by three. Had Iowa State played a, you know, a, a C minus game. Yeah, no, nah, probably B minus, but they, they probably played a C minus D game, and and they were eleven for twenty nine on layups or dunks. It's good. That's good, right? No. Oh, I no, and and I and, 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 and obviously the two. I know Williams and Bloom. I talked about it on theirs. Um, the the, the two you know bunnies that are going to stick with us for eternity. Are the the Keyshawn layup that just tried to deliver a hot and fresh finger roll and missed it, and then the Trey King, which you, you, you don't try to swish a uh, alley oop. You either you either slam that home or you use the backboard. As Machine Gun Mahoney would know, uh, I only swished. Yeah, yeah that's uh, only or, or or dunked or so. dunked. That's it. Um, yeah. So I don't know when that game was. It's hard to get too much out of that orange. Like there's not a lot of juice on it to squeeze out, just because it was such a an aberration from how they had been playing for the majority of the back half of the season. It really looked like they went back to Florida. Like they, Illinois came on, just punched Iowa state in the, in the mouth. And I was, was like, Oh shit. Like, you know, how, how we handle this. And they got down so early. And then I think Illinois just kind of sped them up credit to them. Their, their defense is booty cheeks and they played pretty well, pretty good defense on Iowa state for the majority of the game. Well, I, I knew it though. I knew that they couldn't sustain that level of intensity of defense. And you know, for the first what eight minutes or so of the game they really hammered down, but then after that they kind of you know settled into not as good, but still better than I expected. Well, I think the thing that was interesting to me is that they did. It's how well they played against the press or the pressure that yeah. Iowa State brings, and like Coleman Hawkins to me, I mean, obviously Terrence Shannon scored the most points, so good for Terrence Shannon. But I think Coleman Hawkins to me was the guy where if yes, Shannon was in foul trouble and had to miss some minutes, and Iowa State didn't capitalize as much. But I think Hawkins got three with like 18 minutes or 16 minutes to play in the second half, and they couldn't get another one on him because he's too smart. Like, I respect, you got to at least like tip your cap to Brad Underwood and especially, like I said, especially Coleman Hawkins because one of the things that Iowa State's going to do is there's going to be a screener and there's going to be a ball handler and you're going to try and trap one. And if you can trap that one, then you can get a turnover, you can get a foul or whatever, force a bad pass. But if that ball handler it can get the ball to the screener, which is usually their big guy, then maybe you could force a rotation on that, force a bad shot, you know, whatever. Well, if the ball handler got the ball to Hawkins, Hawkins almost always found the open shot. He's an interesting, pretty much always interesting guy too, because at six ten, basically he has more of a guard type game than a typical six ten type guy. That's a that's a tough matchup. It's Jamie Vanderbeegen. Oh yeah, no. Luke. ish but ish. 
kind of maybe sort a, little of. More, a little more athletic yeah. I was, I was, okay shout out jamie no no disrespect to jamie good dude um canadian eh hey oh, um so but the thing with yeah, like that that game it felt like iowa state finally kind of got their footing in the second half but then once i don't know it was there was this like invisible wall at a tie that just for whatever Down reason two. It was, was a tie. huge for like four minutes yeah i mean just make a bucket just, just make any, a three any shot when shannon was out I'm like that's come on I, it was, uh, I don't know. It was hard. It's also hard to watch after having watched what UConn did to Illinois afterwards. Dude, that, that for the first half, I thought that UConn was right for the pick. And I still think Iowa State would have been a better matchup. I don't think Iowa State would have beat them. UConn's, they're going to win it all. They're, Probably. They're nasty. Probably. But I, I think there would have been a better matchup. Iowa State would have been a better matchup for them. But UConn's, they're really good. It's, <laughs> and it's like they don't have a weakness. And so Illinois plays against Iowa or Iowa State in this, you know, hard fought, just, physical battle they're doing the best they can and they go out against UConn and at one point UConn has a 30 to 0 run nuts 30 to nothing I, I, I stepped away I, I at halftime I we, stepped away we all did to that was stuff. Yeah. the group chat that we have the mu- it was a mutual <laughs> what just happened <laughs> so I don't remember I think I was just going to do like errands and like you know going to take care of some stuff like vacuum or whatever like you know change my daughter and give her a bottle I don't remember exactly what I was doing but I stepped away and then when I came back the I had the TV on I think it was the Baylor women's game and just because the game hit was like sort of separate a little bit. And I flipped back over to Illinois, UConn, and it was like 74 to 40. And I was like, whoa. And so text no, the group. It was, it was like, it was 50 something to basically whatever Illinois had, like 28 or 30 or 23. I yeah. woke up from my nap and it was 56, 25. And I thought I woke up <laughs> in a different <laughs> dimension or something. I think we all like independently like sent into the group chat of like, Holy hell, what just happened? And then I, I, I didn't read you guys' yeah, text and, prior. I was like, oh, you guys and are saying Aiden did, And it was like the same time that I sent it. Aiden sent his. And then there's just two messages like, what in the world just happened? With no answer as to what actually happened. And then you, having not read the previous two messages, sent in, holy hell, what happened? And all of a sudden, we're all three of us are like, uh, UConn's really good. Uh, they're really good. I didn't realize it was 30 to nothing. No, that, that bled into the back half of the back part of the first half but still they were on i think they opened the second half on a 23 to nothing run which is impressive i think it was like tw- at like scoring in the second half i think at one point it was like 33 to 6 that's crazy which yeah, is yeah. just wild you sent us that screenshot and it was and the, the funny thing about it like when you look at iowa state what could they have done like defensively i feel like they probably could have sort of slowed down uconn a little bit but i don't think iowa state could have scored enough to keep up with UConn because if one of the things that, that UConn is so good at, and I think this is, we need a Purdue UConn matchup or, I mean, NC state plays a similar ish kind of style, but where, when, when shots aren't falling because whether the defense is locking up really well, or they're getting a lot of bad looks and you can get, get it into a big dude to take a two foot shot then you can easily kind of stack points when the rest of the team isn't working. Uh, Iowa State, with between Jones and Ward, they're good as secondary options when like Keyshawn's driving or and Taman's driving or when Jiggy is, is able to shoot a three and they kind of force help off. Then they're good as secondary options, but you can't just like throw it in and like go to work like you can with with Edie or DJ Burns. Like that that can stop a drought. So I feel like Iowa State against UConn at some point. You know, for the first, whether it's first half or second half, at some point in there, Iowa State would have a little cold spell where the guards aren't, whether they're not driving or they're just missing shots, or like what happened in the first eight minutes of the Illinois game, is they just took bad looks, like they were just making bad choices. They got sped up or whatever. Uh, and if you do that against UConn, on the other side of it, they're going to score so much so fast that if you go five minutes without, you know, oh, they haven't had a field goal in four minutes and twenty six seconds, they've only made two free throws. Well, in the meantime, UConn scored 18 points. Yeah. So that's an 18 to two run like that. And I feel like Iowa State would have had trouble with that. Not so much on the defensive end where that 18 to two run might be a 10 to two run, but it still goes from comfortable to not comfortable really fast. I felt like too, and I'm not blaming the refs at all. I felt like most of the games that I've seen have been refed pretty well in the tournament. And I thought the refs missed calls on both sides when Iowa State played Illinois. There was one... Hassan Ward, I think, uh, did like a like back down and spun into Coleman's uh, Huck, whatever his name is. I'm blanking on his name. Coleman uh, Hawkins. Yeah, what's his name? Danger. No, no, no. For for Illinois. Oh, Coleman Hawkins. Coleman yeah. Hawkins. I thought I had that backwards. Hawkins Coleman. Interesting. That'd be an interesting first name. Uh, but I th- I thought that that was a charge, and they called it a block. I was like, eh. 
And then there was a few that I feel like they were bailing Shannon out when, like at when, the end. Well, they were bailing Shannon out. And then the one where, um, I don't remember who was like posting up, but then Danger, I think it was Ward or his Ward or, or Jones were like, he was trying, Danger was trying to back down somebody and the, whoever the post was just like backed out of the way and they called a block on him. But it's like, he just yeah. has big feet and fell over. Yeah. And that was, I don't think that was necessarily a foul. Like it looked maybe from the vantage point where the referee was at, like he would have pulled him. But somebody else would have had to see the mechanics that, like, the referee mechanics would have had to say that that wasn't a foul. But it's, I, I don't think you can blame, you can't blame the officials for not making layups. But, but no, you can't. You can't. And that's what I'm saying. The refs weren't the reason Iowa State lost. But the, uh, Courtney Green, is that, I think that's one of the refs. Was he the, was he the one with the really nice hair? He was the one that was butchering all the calls. I'm not sure who it was. Who's the one that but, with the really well coiffed hair? Phew, Where's the Schmedian? I don't know. Oh, uh, TJ Altsberg. No. Um, oh, yeah, Zinger. But um, I felt like th there was there was one ref, and I think Bloom talked about this. There was one ref that had been refing Big 12 games for most of the year. He was getting frustrated with Courtney Green because he's like, what are you calling right now? Like, what are you doing, man? Whatever. Doesn't matter. I would say lost. And I think the total season's open. The other, the other, when you're watching, when you were watching that game, uh, I would also say Illinois probably felt like they had a B plus game as well you know they, they're typically a good free throw shooting team and they shot terrible what was it like 15 of 29 something like that yeah, i mean you missed not good that's a lot of points you leave on the board and iowa state missed a ton of layups and they missed a ton of free throws and it's the kind of stuff that you can't play this like hypothetical yeah. well if we did this because then you also have to say well if they would have done yep. that yeah um so i don't know it, it the roster the way it was it felt like they they were one game short of maximizing where that roster would have been yeah, yeah and maybe if you got a different draw and you got to play, uh, I think Alabama is pretty much just Illinois. Like, those two sure. are pretty much the same. Well, Alabama's a Final Four team, the draw that they got and didn't have to go through UConn. And obviously, Iowa State lost to Illinois, and so you can't say that Iowa State would have beaten Alabama. But that region felt a little bit, they didn't have UConn in it. So I think the Elite Eight's probably like where, and this is kind of like, like, how entitled are we to say that? I said that you laid it to floor, man, a and I, I, I still feel like it should be. three points been. off. But, like, the to to be able to sort of complain that they're one, they're three points away from an Elite Eight. Um, we had this conversation when the women, when their season was over, and it was good that they met their match in the way that they did because it then illuminated to them what to work on for the next year. Yep. Where are your weaknesses? Yep. Where are the things that you struggle with? And the for the women, it was Audie Crooks being able to have a second option and being able to play, play through length. And then beyond that, it's kind of taking care of the ball, tidying it up a little bit. They had a lot of turnovers when they didn't need to. The men, I think it's being able to have a big that doesn't clog the lane. And that doesn't mean they themselves are clogging it. But if you're danger the big dude for illinois you don't who's, have to, who's in the portal now who's in the portal now but you don't have to respect that hassan ward is going to shoot an 18 footer like you don't expect a, a, a post and they did to they, shoot threes they, they sagged off a ton Robin which then Hassan. Keyshawn can't get through his guy and also the big that's playing basically right outside the paint and so if you can have a a big whether that's i think war if you were to give ward another year like if he was to have another year of eligibility underneath iowa state I feel like there would be either a runner or some shot that's from 10 to 12 feet that he would develop, but just, you know, the clock ran out. He he, he grew like oh, a ton. A and, ton, And yeah. like it, last year and even into the early part of this year, it was basically dunks or putbacks that he was able to hit. By the time middle of the end of the season, there was kind of that floater from 8 to 10 feet yep. that he could he could hit relatively consistently. But if you're able to have a a, a big or, a, a you know, someone like Milan but I kind of more on the physical side versus he's more of a, he's a physical player, but he's more of a finesse player where if you have somebody that's a physical player that can also draw a big out that clears the lane for your drivers, then that makes, I would say has shooters. And I think there, that's sort of one of the intents in the portal is to get more shooters because then you have guys like Keyshawn and Taman who can get to the rack. And if you've got a bunch of shooters that are available, then you can start really reining something in, but you also have to have a big, that can draw that opposing big away from the basket. And I don't think that Iowa State had that. Again, and they, we're getting... They, they do have it. He was redshirting. Well, true. and But it feels like, again, to complain about this mm -hmm. is to complain about a Sweet 16 team. Oh, yeah. darn it. Woe is us that 
Iowa State was three points away from an Elite Eight with most of the roster coming back and a good uh, coaching staff that really wants to be here. Uh, your star player, your key player is Taman Lipsy, who is from Ames and, you know, his dream school. Is to, like, woe is us. This is really, yeah. you're, you're complaining about, like, going from a B-plus to an A or an A-minus to an A-plus. Like, that's where the complaint is coming from. But, yeah, it feels like when you were watching the Illinois game, if Iowa State had a big who could shoot or – uh, let's use that example. Use that as an example. If you have a big that can shoot, then Danger can't play because you'd have to draw his big ass away from where the basket is, is which then too. frees up where the, the driving lanes is, and he's not going to be able to adjust back in. Okay, so they take him out of the floor, and then you put Coleman Hawk into the five. Well, who then is now the four? That person's on Milan. If Milan's able to shoot and play with a little bit more confidence, then he has an advantage on whoever you're going to be putting in for them. Or if you go even smaller, then or, or you try and play both and Hawkins is in there and they be like, it show it completely rotates where the defense is going to be. If you have a big, who can bring someone away from the basket. And it feels like going into next year, that seems like a priority in addition to some other pieces that we'll get to for the men's team specifically to uh, kind of get over the hump into the elite eight final four national championship conversation. Well, so I think that's, I think that's kind of what we're going to see with Deshaun Jackson, the Charlotte transfer. He, he has, he's, He's like a mix between Rob and Hassan, um, but he does have a shot. You know, he's he's got that elbow jumper. He doesn't have, quite have a three. I don't well, you think. don't need him to have necessarily a three. You just have no, to be a threat but, that he but, can't just the 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 opposing post can't just park his ass underneath the yeah. or underneath the bucket. Yep, and and he he is not quite. From my understanding, I haven't watched a lot of film on him, but what I've seen is that he's not quite going to be the Hassan shot blocker. He's not quite as athletic as Hassan. Um, I'm not sure if his motors as good as big robs or not Bob Jones Bob but um he's kind of a combination between the two of them but can shoot um so I don't think he's as good maybe on defense but he's a little more on offense well just yet but, but we, we don't we don't need him to 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 block shots you know per se if, if he's just gonna have good um good position and can just be a big dude and well, I, and, and, and and have enough respect that you know that, that the defense needs to respect him so they, they can't just sag off I don't know I'm I I, I completely agree with what you're saying that they need someone who can do that. And I think that's kind of what they're addressing because he can do that. And also JT rock is he can shoot the three and he is a better shooter, but he's also what seven foot seven one. So he's more dynamic than just some, some guy who's going to just post up on the block. I think he just needs to get in the weight room a little bit. Cause he, he, he has in, a little bit though. He's yeah. like two thirty now. He's, he's, it's, it's still kind of seven for, foot two thirty is like five foot one twenty. Well, I was six foot one forty two going into college. <laughs> a, you never would have guessed it. You're like, this guy's stacked. Banging strength, huge quads. Yeah, huge quads. Dude had a pancake ass. Still does. <laughs> uh, Working on it. Good for you, buddy. At least you, you know the first phase of of solving a problem is recognizing that you have a problem. I had a guy come up to me in the gym there. He goes, "Hey, why do you?" I had a bench that I was like squatting down, so I get to past ninety degrees. He goes, "Why do you? Why are you grazing that bench?" I said, "So I know where I'm at. Like I can I can squat down with nothing and tell myself I'm at ninety degrees and I'm not." It's good for you. It's range of motion. I was like, man, this guy was like asking me, hey man, like I like this workout you're doing. I'm like, just it's range of motion, man. Something right? It's air squats. Uh, No, it was not air squats. I had wide weight on there. Almost. No. Empty bar. PVC. No, no, no. I I had the Smith machine, which I don't like. Where I go, where I go, that's all I got. It's a, it's bad. It's it's hard bar path. Not a big Smith machine guy, unless you have, unless you're trying to work, especially for like somebody for bench. Yeah, I've I've kind of got a little bit of movement with bench. Yeah, it's just it's hard slot anyway. Um. No, it feels like with the Iowa State, to bring it back to some reasonable amount of focus, because we have 568 people that are tuned in to watch it. Squirrel. Our dumb selves. Uh, I think the other thing that's interesting about this Iowa State roster, like the constituents of it, is um, with, we were texting this, and uh, what I think everyone expected Omaha to be would have been nice in the game against Illinois, because that is another way that you can bring a big away from the basket yeah. because it doesn't have to be like a true post where if you could play Milan Omaha three guards, yes, that's a slightly shorter lineup, but danger again, that's the, he was having a, a huge effect on Iowa state's ability to drive late in the second half because he was just physically he's running into a cinder block. So with someone like that, like, his capacity of what everyone thought that he was going to be or wished that he was going to be to have a physical 6'8", to be able to be athletic enough to draw somebody out, but physical enough to to kind of bang in there if you need him to. 
Mil- it's not Milan's game as much to be as like a physical 6'8". He's more of a finesse 6'8", but again, can still go and rebound if he needs to. But I think that sort of length, what Demarion Watson kind of is as well, is just as for whatever reason, I guess we've seen one game, the, the Demarion, Demarion Watson 15-point game. Uh, but other than that, there hasn't been much of an offensive game. And so if you can have a guy who has a an offensive game at 6'8", who is fairly physical then you don't need him to you don't need a person to be 7 foot to accomplish clearing the lane out a little bit more than what Iowa State's roster has been so i think that's also probably a thing that i would guess the coaching staff wants to go and before we before we kind of like kind of react to that um if you're if you're interested in the transfer portal there is no better place to get information about the transfer portal than the premium boards for Cyclone Fanatic and i also don't know anybody who's more plugged in than Williams about most things, uh, transfer portal slash college basketball, specifically about Iowa State. So uh, he got back from Boston, and it was just <laughs> go 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 chaos. <laughs> he's yeah. I feel like he's going to be go 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 until the the and coincidentally the end of spring ball is like one day after the end of portal season. So I feel like April twentieth, four twenty. Not even I don't. That's not Chris's bag, but that's a that's a day of relaxation. For Williams, yeah, he Size could really, trivia, so. he could really relax if he wanted to. Well, Size House, that's the twentieth, or is that the nineteenth? Twentieth, oh Saturday. God bless Scott Size House. I haven't gotten an invite yet. The Size House trip, never been to it. Oh my, it's the most fun. Is I it? think it's probably because the the credit card that I used to pay for my Letter Winners Club expired, and I forgot to put a new one in. So I'm technically not right now part of the Letter Winners Club. Mm. But get on that. I I know I need to change. I think that. I am. I'm not sure if I am. I need to. If anybody out there wants me on their squad, let me know. I really can't tell you how I much love, I bring to the. I love size house trivia, and if for whatever reason I don't get the invite as quote a celebrity, uh, I'm open to being on a table. I don't. I don't want to be a celebrity. I just want to be just a normal. Joker. It's actually kind of fun because you get to go around and like mingle with different tables. For size house, the best tables are the ones who there's like one extreme is taking it way too seriously, where like they they don't want to drink a beer because they don't want to like distract from their mental focus of getting the trivia right. I don't want to be in that. And team. then the other side of it is. I what's a little bit a little bit much for me is when people are like only thing that matters is the beer tower and you get like the plastic cups and finish it and the towers like this high I'd like in between and then yeah and and then you're like going to play trivia and I'm competitive and then we're like you know it's whatever uh emoji thing and it's like they're gonna put it up that emoji one that was hard poor, last year hardest category of all time I think the mm-hmm. I think we got three at my table and I was pretty proud of that what was the there's like a weather one uh, the weather one actually Brett McIntyre fun. Oh, Brett McIntyre yes. As, was the only one. Like stood up, w- the table that I was at actually had a meteorologist at it. And so that, yeah. that table we got, I think, or that one, we got nine out of 10 and I contributed very little to that particular round. But the moral of the story is that the right answer for me as the best tables at size house trivia are the ones that are not absolutely blitz drunk, but also the ones that are not so stiff that you like can't enjoy the fact that this is, an absurd competition here. So like somewhere in the middle and also is Crochelle able to even do it still at the amount of times that his table has won like Tom Crochelle. Oh, so old he, SIM. Oh, yeah. last year it was a bunch of cyclones TV people that won it. So. It's I, so Crochelle. I, mean, I remember, I don't know if that's, I've done it maybe. I mean, I, I feel like you want to have Crochelle or like Mike green on your team. Yeah. I think they had a team like Crochelle and Mike. I that's think they fair. were at a table and like, those are two of the just, as far as like recall of random information, just again, trivia. And those been, two guys, they, just great. They've been around for forever. Well, it's not Iowa State trivia. It's just trivia, just things. I want Doc Schulman on my team. There was, I mean, not Does a lot go? of it is Iowa State. It's, Very, it's actually. There's a lot about Iowa in general that I remember, but not sometimes. a ton about. State yeah, of, state Iowa, of State. Iowa? Yeah, the state of Iowa. Okay. It's, yeah. I mean, I just, I love size house trivia. So again, I will, I, I, I will beg for an invite because it's my favorite event of the year. But if I don't get an invite as a celebrity, I'm dear listener, dear viewer. I will. I'll sit at your table. I want to. I've never never done it. It's great. I want someone to invite me. Uh, I'll pay my own way. I, I, don't I won't. Know how that works. I'm not going to pay for it. I don't know how that I'll works. I'll pay for actually. my letter winners club. But how much does it cost? That's like uh, it's a pretty. It's 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 not cheap. I think. I'll start a GoFundMe. <laughs> GoFundMe grant to get to Size House of Trivia. Oh boy. Can't, also, can't promise I'll bring much to the table, but I'll be fun. Uh, also, I we got to make one more acknowledgement. This is gonna right after we record. Um, uh, Steph and Elisa are going to record the last episode of Title Nine. Uh, so, one shout out to them because before hell of a run, hell of a run, and before women's sports were like as paramount as they are right now, or as as visible as they are right now, uh, Iowa State fans, 
embraced women's sports and kind of pushed it. And these two, that show is one big reason why. Um, one thing that I will say to you, like kind of with that, if you're watching this live, obviously the Iowa game hasn't tipped off yet. The Iowa LSU game, nor has USC UConn. That neither one of those games has tipped off. Obviously, if you're listening to this tomorrow and you're wondering, uh, are they going to talk about the women's basketball? We are not. Just that's a big story across the country. I would arguably Iowa LSU with Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, that whole thing. Well, previous that's, previous um, the national championship from last yeah, year. Yeah, it's national championship recap from last year. This is obviously the biggest game of men's and women's all year as far as like the most attention. So we're not going to talk about it uh, just because it hasn't happened yet for those that are listening tomorrow. I do have some breaking news from Iowa LSU. What? Angel Reese has set a crown on the bench. Oh, good God. Before tip. What are we doing? <laughs> oh. <sighs> what are we doing here? What's, what's she going to do with that? You know, wear that in the game? I, I think just to, to I say think I'm, a, I'm the queen here. She, she, she's, send she's, a she's, message. Send she's, a message. She's trying to one-up Caitlin Clark? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Now, oh, showman. yeah. Angel Reese reminds Caitlin Clark who has a crown during one. Stop. Yeah. And no, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't mind it. I don't like it. I personally wouldn't want my team to be doing that if I was rooting for it. I don't mind it. You're a 22 year old who's playing. Tell me that like when Terrell Owens pulls a Sharpie out of his sock or Joe Horn pulls a, you know, a, a cell phone out from underneath the thing. We all didn't go, ha ha, that's funny. And it's just because you expect it out of a wide receiver or a cornerback in the NFL because like that is inherently a trash talk position. And so they take it like one step further than you'd like. Well, you think too, like boxers or, or UFC fighters, they always are jawing and just creating as much hype as they can for you know yeah. the, the lead up to it. So yeah, so I like, get it. I okay. get it. I, I don't, I don't like it, okay. but I don't mind it. Like do your thing, like talk your talk. If you're going to talk it, talk your talk. Uh, but LSU because of Kim to me is just the least likable. And it's honestly, like, I don't even the team. It's fine. Team, I don't have any beef with anybody on the team. I just, Kim, man. Did you guys read the Washington Post? I haven't read. I haven't read it yet, but it's. Um, have you? Yes. It's well, tell us about l- it. Little recap for those that. Well, that oh, didn't I, I, for I it. did it's, see that the, the guy called him uh, dirty detributors, something like that. Basically, that dirty. was uh, the LA, it's, it's, LA, it's, LA Times. LA Times, and that one, they, that one was a. They're just call, that, was editorial. that was just that was an editorial. They're catching strays at this point. I'm the, not going to spoil the, the, the entire Washington Post story because worth reading. I'm a, I'm a personal professional journalist, so I'm not going to give out yeah. information. But uh, recap, my thoughts on it were basically she She's not a nice lady. Yeah, it it, it was That's nothing shocking. nothing new. It was more just details we didn't slash wouldn't have ever known that she's not a nice um, lady. And yeah, she my my opinion didn't really change on her coming out of it. It's it just, just confirmed like she what doesn't you already really thought. have much sympathy for anyone. Did, anyone. did she ever like have anybody put a trash can on their head and have them run her on the court? Not not in the article anyway. Why? What's up? Oh, they did that at Iowa. Okay, so I guess I didn't know that. Well, just trying to compare scum to scum, you know. Oh, mm-hmm. okay, that's it's on but, to the next topic. On to the next topic. Uh, the yeah, really, I don't know if there's anything else with the the rosters. I think the women's roster, uh, we sort of expected somewhat with Bristow being on, which is kind of a hit because I think she's she had a great she, game, she had too. a great game, and I think she's going to continue to get better. And she's sort of the you know, we talked about with the men's needing the men needing a wing where you have someone tall and athletic who can actually score, but also then guard against some of the length. That's sort of what her role will eventually be wherever she ends up landing. Um, and then Naidu leaving. I, it's not, I, I would imagine if, you know, good for her. I, it yeah. seems like there is all like a, all piece together and go do your thing. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I don't blame her for your one final year, go and do something different. And whatever. it feels, it, and, but the, the both rosters, the men's and the women's feel like, and again, don't you don't want to necessarily talk too much portal news because it changes so fast. Very fluid. But you would expect with what the the majority of prevailing wins are is that the nucleus of both teams is going to be in place. And then coming into next year, it's how do you supplement that core nucleus as opposed to Kansas for the men has to completely turn over their entire roster. Like that's a thing that that's not a situation that doesn't feel like Iowa State's in for either one. So it's sort of, you know, for the men, what do you want? Some some bigs to stretch and some more three point shooters are always going to be welcome. And for the women, some bigs to stretch and some more three point shooters are always going to be welcome. I thought I'd seen uh, regarding Kansas that Dickinson might be back. Doesn't he, how many years is he going to play? Is this Perry Ellis round two? I think he has one more year. Oh, he's looking away. 
I, th- I thought Dickinson had one more year that he, he could play, and I thought he had, I thought he said he was coming back. Maybe I might be making it up. I don't know. I've made stuff up before on this, so <laughs> I've just been. But, but I, wrong. I, I guess what, what I will say in regards to the, to the men's roster, um, I, I could see Iowa State doing a lot of three. Aiden yard- confirmed, by the way. He's played three years at Michigan, one year at KU, and he was a freshman 2020-21. So he has the COVID, meaning he is the yeah. last round of. I, I think I'd seen that he's COVID guys. I think I'd seen that he's going to try to play one more year because he's not, and I mean he's fringe NBA guy. Feels like no, he'll he'll be, he'll be NBA, but yeah, but like he's, he's not going to be an impact guy. Yeah, um, but in regards to the Iowa State roster, I with the amount of guards that Iowa State has and they have coming in, I could see Iowa State playing a lot of uh, three guard lineup. So, for instance, I could see like the starting lineup being Lipsy, Keyshawn, Jiggy, Milan, and uh, Deshaun Jackson. So, Milan at our four, which he's not really a four, but he's six eight, so he is he is he a can four. play that. Yeah, because then you have you know coming off the bench. You got Noyes, who I think is going to be a dog. This freshman coming the ki- in, the kid from New Bru- York, from Brewster, New Hampshire. But yeah, well, I was just saying, and the ki- and the kid from oh, New and York. the kid, yeah. So Pierce. Um, then Iowa State. You know, I'm, I'm guessing they're going to get one or two, maybe guards in the portal. Then at, at the four position, you've got um, Milan or Watson. Hopefully, open he sticks around. Potentially another transfer guy. And then at the five, you've got for sure Deshaun Jackson and JT Rock. So I don't know what they're going to do, but I, I could see them playing a lot of uh, three guard lineups and. My opinion, Iowa State's probably looking for bigger guards so that they can go. Yeah, like a six six, six five, six six type. Uh, even maybe even six seven. That's kind of you know borderline, can, if borderline you, guard. If you're playing quote small, small then you can still defend against an Illinois if Coleman Hawkins is there for or right, whatever. Right, because right now, I mean that's that's still kind of a kind of a small lineup though with because Lipsy's six foot six one, right? Yeah, and then and then Keyshawn six, six four, four and. I think Jiggy's six three. Six. I think he's six. Well, I think Jiggy's the tallest of the bunch. I think oh, he's six okay. four, six five. But then you got Noyes coming. Noyes is six six. This kid from um, shooter, originally from Chicago, New Hampshire. He is nasty. He, he's he's gonna play some in this next year. He's nasty. His offensive game is disgusting. And then Pierce, he's built like Deontay Burton. I think he's like six five two as well. So he, and, but he's you know, the dude's not Graham Mahoney built. But <laughs> he's not quite as thick as Graham Mahoney. He's just right. doesn't quite. I was gonna say opposite. Upper he, body he, he muscle. He probably does have a donk. Whereas Graham Mahoney got pancake ass. Yeah, it's just. Poor white guy. But I bet uh, um a little rude there. <laughs> God damn. Uh, but I, I I I'm I'm really curious what the 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 construct of the roster is gonna be next year. Um Jeff, don't don't even get me on don't even get me started on predictions for next year because I think the team's gonna be nasty next I think, year. I think I think there will be too. And I think just last little bit of kind of forward thinking of Iowa State before we get into the the stupid debate. It's just I again I don't understand. Don't stupid because your opinion, man. That's right. That's right. <sighs> anyway, uh the thing looking at the Big 12 as a whole next year, it feels like Kansas and Iowa State, based on you, the expectations of what Kansas is probably going to be able to pull from the portal, and also it's Bill Self. Like Bill Self finishing fifth in the conference was fifth or sixth? Sixth, I think. The worst that they finished. I think he has never had more than five, lo- five or six losses in the conference. Wild. Like you would expect Bill Self to get back to where Kansas being sort of the top or right near the top. So you'd expect Kansas. Iowa State would be right there, and then Houston, whatever they is Cryer back because he has a COVID year, right? I would imagine Cryer's back, and Cryer oh Sharp. God. I think Roberts and Shed are gone. I think, but they're going to probably get more. Uh, Sharp's not. Sharp's like a sophomore. Yeah, so uh, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, oh, he's back. Like, yeah, yeah. I think what they lose is Roberts and Shed. I think yeah. are going to be the two guys that they're that are out. Cryer mm-hmm. can't come back. Cryer can't he's come got- back. He was a freshman in 2020. So, so. I bet I bet Cryer's going to be their point guard unless they find somebody else to be a point guard. But Houston's going to be back. Kelvin Sampson's going to be good. And and then also, you can always count on Baylor to be better. And then, don't look now, but West Virginia could very quickly go from being I don't like that, bottom yeah. of the league because when you get Darren DeVries and Tucker DeVries in the Big 12, and then the capacity that they have to... I mean, how much money did they spend last year Kirk, getting Kirk, guys in? Kirk Creasman's coming back, too. Care, ugh. Anyway, uh, he's talented. He's he, I mean, he, he, he is a person. It's like, uh, yeah, but it's, as a player, he's kind of a ding bat, but you're good. You know? So, but like West Virginia could get really good, really fast. So I, but I think the teams that you, that you would peg to be in the top three next year would be Kansas, Iowa state, probably Houston, just because of track record. But again, I don't, I want to see what Houston is without Jamal Shedd. I think Texas tech could be good too. They, they kind of surprised some people this year. And I think this was the first or second year of this new coach. First. Yeah. So, um, you know, kind of once he gets his feet underneath him and and gets rolling in the portal, I think they've got a really good. Um, but NIL, Pop Isaac's and Pop Isaac's entered the portal and he's. Yeah, but Joe, so, Joe Toussaint might still have another year. He's got like 
sixth school. Shed also has a COVID year. Oh, Shed does? Yeah. He's only oh, been at Houston four years. Man. Dang. Man. I thought he was done. He's so good. I, I like Shed's game. He's so, so much. much fun to watch. Like yeah. Houston's easy to root for. Houston yeah. and Iowa State are the are basically the a same. Lot, a lot of respect. A lot of respect. They they know it's going to be just a rock fight and just you know, but a lot of respect between the two. Of them. Yeah. And I felt like this the fan bases too were very much like Houston's cheering for Iowa State. Iowa State cheering for Houston. Yeah, it's that's, like that's the, kind it's, of a line. Yeah, those those two. You, want. Are, we, you know, Houston fans, we're on. We're with you. We're with you. And then yeah, we'll, we'll unify, BYU fans and Utah fans. We'll we'll unify against. Oh, and also we got to. I think Arizona is going to be in there because the whole conference Ooh, yeah, is going yeah. to be up. You know, it's it's turned up again. So I think Arizona is probably going to be up there. Um, and I would say probably that's where it, I I would guess. So you know, Iowa State, Houston, Kansas, Baylor, Arizona, probably where your top five preseasons. And then there's going to be a whole bunch of teams like Texas Tech, like TCU with Jamie Dixon, like uh, West Virginia. I think they're going to be a lot better than the the. the I like how you haven't mentioned Kansas State because I hope they just suck next I, year. Same. I, I doubt they do. I bet they get better. But like, there's just gonna be a whole lot of talent. I, I'm the the Big Twelve didn't do as well in the tournament this year as what you would expect them to. Um, and I think the my theory on that is that there's really the committee's out to get us. Nope. Oh. Uh, the f- there's four teams that realistically could have done anything in the tournaments: Iowa State, Houston, Kansas, and Baylor. Like at the peak roster construction, it's those four teams. Well, Iowa State and Baylor just played bad games and lost those two tough uh, but then Kansas was super injured and not very deep but their roster theoretically would have been good enough by, by the time they got to the end of the big 12 season they were so hurt Houston same thing and then Jamal Shedd if Shedd plays that game still they probably beat Duke yeah which then that matchup becomes North or uh, NC, uh, State. NC State who knows what happens in that game but I would imagine that Shedd uh, not a match. I would be very shocked if they didn't win that game if Jamal Shedd's still there. So theoretically, Houston and Kansas were super hurt through the tournament, and Baylor and Iowa State just didn't play. They had they ran into a bad game when they shouldn't have had a bad game. Um, I, I, I know we can't play, um, you know, what if or theoretically, but I wonder if you know Iowa State was the the last two seed that they were you know seeded the last two seed. I wonder if they were any other two seed how they would have fared because their quadrant was stacked. Yes, and but here's the other thing that I think just the general theme of why the Big 12 did worse is because the committee did universally penalize the Big 12 and the Mountain West for having not scheduled more competitive, not like sure. ac- across the board. And so Iowa State was a one, or excuse me, Iowa State was a two, Houston was a one, the N- Baylor was a three. Like not, those, not, not just Baylor was a three. Iowa State was the eighth ranked team. And right. Baylor was a ninth. But still, th- those were your three best teams in the conference. And what they're essentially saying is that there's one of you that's in the top five, the other of you barely in the barely in the top ten. And so they kind of universally pushed everybody down. Which then, if Iowa State was that last one seed, they would have been in Alabama's bracket, probably playing against North Carolina, just you know, or, or whatever. It would have just been shifted around the way it needed to. And if they would have recognized the the strength of conference in a different way, all of them would have probably pushed up a seed line or two, uh, depending on who you're talking to. Like maybe TCU goes to a six from an eight or, or a seven from a nine or whatever they were. Like So they kind of universally got pushed down, which the reason why higher seeds tend to advance is that they get better matchups. And so the Big 12 universally kind of got pushed down a little bit and the teams that were expected to advance two of the four were really too hurt to do anything. I don't think it necessarily is an indictment on the Big 12, but I would be very surprised if you don't see a substantially more challenging schedule next year in the offseason non-conference, if it's scheduled sort of year to year, than it w- was there this season. For teams like Kansas always schedules hard, but I would imagine Baylor's going to schedule a lot tougher. Houston's going to schedule a lot tougher. Iowa State's going to probably schedule a lot tougher. So you get more of these matchups to then boost your resume to then pull the rest of the conference up. Have you seen the the field for the Maui Invitational? No. Aiden, can you pull it up? The Maui Invitational is absolutely loaded next year, um, which I love because Iowa State has a chance to play some really good teams like UConn's in it, um, North Carolina's in it, and Aiden will pull, pull it up here in a second. Um, but they've Iowa State's got a chance to play some, like two number one seeds at least from from this year, um, but some some really talented teams. So I, I don't know. I I want Iowa State to because Clemson Clemson had a really good year too. I want I want Jamie to to Jamie Pollard to schedule Clemson <laughs> on Iowa State schedule. 
So, oh boy. Yes. So there's so there's the the Maui Invitational. Auburn, here. Colorado, Auburn. Dayton. So that's tournament team, tournament team, tournament team. Iowa State tournament team. Memphis, not a tournament team. Michigan State tournament team. North Carolina tournament team. UConn tournament team. I don't. Was, that is was Colorado tournament team. Yeah, they're a first four. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, right. So UConn one seed. North Carolina one seed. Michigan State seven. Uh, eight, seven, eight. They were eight or nine. Uh, Iowa State two seed. Dayton. What, in was, the tournament was, six. Was Michigan Michigan State was a play in game. So they were a, they were a ten seed, I think. Anyway, yeah, uh, whatever. and then Auburn is oh, regardless though. But either way, like that's a that's a loaded field. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's also in Hawaii. Would go same thing if someone wants to. I would go to Size House Trivia and or would go to the Maui Invitational this my, year. My neighbor asked me for a go, and I was like, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Ugh, maybe. Uh, okay. Let's dive into it, Jeff. I want. This is the main reason why we went. We went, uh, we went live. live on this one. I think we got we got just about, just shy of nine hundred people that are watching right now. Yeah. And so I, 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 Aiden, I can can you monitor the comments on this because I want to know how many people think that I'm an idiot and how many people can, think you two are idiots. Can you can you like do a poll? We can later. Yeah, let's do a poll. Okay. So the conversation <laughs> the conversation what was going on. So right now there are four teams in the end the men's final four. One matchup is less interesting than the others. The UConn and Alabama. It's you would expect UConn to win that fairly comfortably. It's essentially, if, them they're playing Illinois again. Yeah, they're playing Illinois again, a second time. And if they if if you, Alabama ends up pulling the upset, cool, great. I'm going to watch the game regardless. Uh, but I'm less interested in that one. The other one is Purdue versus NC State. And why am I excited about that? I think same reason everybody else is excited about that. With Zach Eady and DJ Burns, and those two have been able to go back and forth with just some straight up just U-Haul dump truck weight. And we were texting about this. Zach Eady had 40 and 19 in the game against Tennessee. And we were having this group chat conversation. And somehow, you two morons used the description that Zach Eady isn't good. No, no, he's just hold tall. on. No. That, no, 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 no. You were saying that Zach Eady is not good. He's just we tall. We said he's good because he's tall. That's that's the you're reason why he's good. Separating yeah. the two, so you're separating the fact that if he, so you're, here's, hold on. Your, your, your side of the debate was Bo Jackson was just so, faster. So that's let's, not a physical. So trait. here's here the sentence was Grant Grant said it to something to the effect of he is only good. Zach Eady is only good because he's tall, and my response, or because he's big. My response was Shaquille O'Neal was only good because he was bigger than everyone else. Yes. Yeah, and so by saying that that Shaquille O'Neal is only good because of him being bigger than everyone else, that Shaquille O'Neal is bad at basketball if he wasn't, like, is just bad at basketball. If 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 you, and you, you can't say this, but you can, if you shrunk Shaq down eight inches and he lost 40 pounds, is he as good? What's, what, what is Shaq's skill set? What is Zach Eady's skill set? And so here's the thing, though. It's an inherent advantage to be tall in basketball. So that's kind of part and parcel with the whole thing. Yeah, he's good because he's tall. Because it's an advantage, which is where the Bo Jackson line came in. Because my response then was, one, was the Shaq one. And two, Bo Jackson's only good at sports because he's faster than everyone else. Yes, he was you, stronger you, than most everyone, too. You, but you, be, being, and, and do you fast? think that he, do you think that he was just, he grew, he was just born a slug, just a turd on the floor. No, no. And then but, he just, oh, I think there, he worked his way into being faster and stronger. Just, you saying Bolt wasn't born running a thousand miles an hour. But he his, was born fast because so, the fast switch muscles or whatnot. And but, because he's also taller and can have a bigger stride length. He's only fast because he's tall. And his legs move faster than everyone else. But but with Bo, Bo Jackson, you can improve speed. You can improve strength. You can't improve size. But you can be... So the Shaquille O'Neal, the Zach Eady, the, the Bo Jackson may not be a perfect one-to-one -one correlation, but an advantage in basketball is to be taller. There are certain physical characteristics. Born, speed is not a physical characteristic. Let's take that one off the table then. So if you are born with hands that are sizable enough to palm a basketball, you will probably be better at basketball than if you had these tiny little baby hands and that you couldn't actually palm the basketball. So let's take that example. Uh, I used this one before. If Michael Jordan was four foot nine and had tiny baby hands, would he have been Michael Jordan? He still would have been good. You, 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 can take, you can take LeBron James, shrink him eight inches, and he's still going to be dominant because he has, he has a... No, he wouldn't. Yes, because he has no, that skill set. No, he wouldn't. Set. He is that good because he's tall. Every basketball player is good because they're tall. Oh, Zach Eady can stand but, in the lane and, and 
just he he's can go from from block to block. He standing there, he blocks out the sun, which is the point. That's you, the point. It's you an can inherent be, advantage to be tall. But, like, but you're saying advantage. Yes. That doesn't mean he's good. Yes, it is. That's just he has an advantage. He, and he doesn't even use it on defense. He if, just stands if, there. If, if Hassan Ward was 7'4", 300 pounds, would he be better than Zach Eady? I, I don't know. He has more athleticism and he has he's a better skill set than, than Zach Eady. Zach Eady doesn't have a skill set. His skill set is he's big. All he does is post up and bloop, dunk it. or bloop. He, doesn't, he doesn't shoot. He doesn't shoot a mid-range because jumper. he doesn't have to. And he doesn't have to because he's so big. You, you, and that, that's that's what we're talking about. DJ Burns is that DJ Burns. DJ Burns they're, save they're, America. They're, they're, they're both <laughs> three hundred ish pounds. DJ Burns says he's two seventy five. That dude is. is this, he's, it's, it's, he's listed on the roster at two seventy five. Every bit of three thirty. I, I, I know uh, Tyler Miller. We talked to before we came on Tyler Miller, which it's it's different because Tyler Miller is surrounded by other. Big yeah, like dudes. football players are standing next to football players, or football players are generally pretty thick, muscular dudes. So if you have somebody who's um, lean, they look skinny compared to a football player versus all basketball players are like rails. They're taller and skinnier in person than you think. So when you have a guy who's not a rail, he looks huge. So so when you have a guy who is a rail, myself, um, I know what a 300-pound guy looks like. DJ Burns. Yeah, bills. I've seen a couple men that are 300 pounds, and DJ Burns is all... He's all three bills. Pounds. I also think Zach Eadie is probably over 300 pounds as well, too. Um, but it'll be a good it'll be a good matchup because both are true. Thank you, Jos- Josiah. Um, they are true, and I'm, I'm not saying Zach Eady is bad. He is not a bad his his I will say this, his game will not translate to the NBA. So adva- so the, the somebody said you're it, there. We go. Okay, Zach won't be any good in the NBA. Want to know one reason why? Because re- he has no skill set. Because there's taller guys in the NBA, and the lane is wider. So the advantage of being super tall is lessened there. Because so think about this, like. Uh, other guys that are tall. Remember uh, Taco Fall from yes. what was it, uh, South Florida and Central like, Central Florida? It was Central Florida, really? Anyway, so he they got him into the tournament. He's seven six. He's got length on Zach Eady. He was good because he was tall. But was he then able to advance his team all the way to the? Did he score forty and nineteen? Did every record that is on the books right now that Zach Eady has? So the things that are amazing is that. The only person that or he's five consecutive games of 20 and 10. The only people that are on that list are Larry Bird, Shane Battier, uh, Blake Griffin. And then I, I forget there's played played for UNLV back in the Jerry Tarkanian days when they were winning national championships, four guys. And then he's tied with David Robinson. So are we saying that all of those players are bad? I haven't heard of some of them, but David, David the Admiral, David Robinson, <laughs> I'm just kidding. again, one of the best. And then the other person that like, the the only people to put up, I believe it was forty and or what thirty and ten or average thirty and ten in the first five games of the tournament are Jerry West, Wilt Chamberlain, and Zach Eady. So Wilt Chamberlain played against Plumbers, so yeah, sure, still. So <laughs> Wilt Chamberlain's not good either. For 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 me, it's it's Hakeem more, Olajuwon's he, not good. Actually, either. Wilt Chamberlain has a better argument for it. he was just good because he was bigger than everyone <laughs> else at his time <laughs> than Zach Eady. For for me, it's more impressive for if if, if Iowa State and Purdue would be matched up. It's more impressive that Taman, if he were to dribble around Zach Eady and score, than it would be for Zach Eady to swat his shot. Zach Eady has pickleball mallets for for hands, and he just he clogs up. You see, he, he just he drifts off and he gets blocks, which he's big, but he is he is good because he's big. Audie Crooks, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. She's good because she's more powerful. Yeah, she's more powerful, but she met her match uh, against Sanford because she didn't have any other moves. Her skill set was bully ball. Zach's Zach Eady's skill set is bully ball in a way. I, DJ Burns is going to shut him down. I, no, I don't say shut him down. He's not going to get. What, what would you say that he's at? He's averaging thirty and ten. He's not going to get that. He's not going to get thirty points versus NC State. Oh boy, I disagree. So, ha, did you actually watch the Purdue game, or yes. have you watched Purdue games? Yes. Zach Eady had one foul in the entire game. Why is play that? defense? He doesn't have watch, to watch him on any defensive possession. He stands there and the ball floats over his head every time. And he just acts like he's going to go block it. And then he does. So, and so, so, so many but of one of the things possessions though, they, they just dump it to a spot. Zach, you can have the ball and hold up and you can, you can jump and you won't get to it. So they just toss it to where no one can get it. But Zach, and then yep. he just dunks it. He can stand there and grab the rim. Yeah. I, imagine if, 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 if I was playing much against a bunch of fourth graders on a, on an eight foot hoop, I would dominate because you're better than everyone. It's an inherent advantage. I'm not a good basketball player, though. It's an inherent advantage. Again, good. What is good? So define a good basketball player. What's a good basketball player then? Someone who can score who points. Someone who can score points. Who can rebound, help their team win. 
Does, is that, does, is that does, not does, good? Does Zach Eady have the up and under dipsy do Yes. No. Yes. That's why he had 10 fouls or 11 fouls that were called on just him. Have you watched the highlight reel of all the fouls called on him? It's be, well, if the ball's up here, if he's got the ball Hold way on. up here, a zillion miles up there, then what are you going to do in order to get it? If he brings the ball down, you're going to have to... Okay, so you sock him in the back of the leg. You're gonna say find some ticky tack fouls. I'm sure they're I'm sure they exist. I'm we, sure that's we, what it is. We need a pull for this, Aiden. So if he's got the ball way up here, and at a certain point, if he brings it down, you have one shot at getting that ball out. And you're gonna strafe at the ball. You're gonna have to. And if you strafe at the ball, you're likely to a hand here or there. So so early on in the game, it was uh, at the like 1502 mark. Uh Zach Eady was on the block. He went to do like a baby hook and he got swatted. Again, a couple minutes later, he's like three feet inside. Baby hook again, swatted. He doesn't have a jump shot. He doesn't. He, he doesn't shoot the ball. He just kind of like baby hooks it because he knows once he gets up here, you can't touch it. You got that pulled up, Aiden? What do we got here? These are the fouls called against Zach Eady. Yep, all all hand, all hand there, hundred percent. Okay, that's definitely a, trying like to establish Kale, position. Right there. Thrown all hand, all hand. He didn't right even there. touch him on that one. Yeah, he did. It's all left arm right there. No, it's all arm, one hundred percent arm. They're not even touching him. Who are you talking about? They are not. That's right there. Tennessee, number 30. That so one was a, a strafe foul. right across his arm. This is, what is this, this is one? great. He this just fell over on that one. That one's not a foul. Audio. That one's not a foul. So there's, for those that are watching on video, you can actually see this. For those watching on audio, that one wasn't a foul. There is a, two of those six. So there have been six this fouls right him, now. but it was funny. <laughs> one of the guys <laughs> just got a over. Uh, that one wasn't called a foul. Uh, that one's all arm. Hassan Ward would have dunked all, all over those guys if he was seven, four, 300 pounds. So they traveled on that one, did so the thing that that I am struggling because what you're saying is that a basketball player who is averaging more than 30 points and more than 10 rebounds and has taken his team to the final four is not a good basketball player. You should. Not, you, not what we're saying. No. That's we're what saying you're saying. He's good because he's tall. I, I'm, I'm saying it's good because he's tall. He's not good because he has a skill set. Being tall yes. is not a skill set. That's where we're at. I, like if, you, if you have a sheet of paper and you're writing down all the skill set, right? What goes on there? Seven. Are we talking about just he like Zach Eady? Yes. Uh, Top of the list is seven foot four. Yeah. <laughs> and, but the thing is, someone's saying advantage is not a skill. Uh, in another sport, so let's say um, I'm just I'm pulling a, a CrossFit example because this is kind of the world that I live in. So CrossFit as a, as a general sport is a test of most things. Like if you can lift a lot, you can run a lot, you can do whatever. Uh, as a silly example is if I can do, if I say I can do a hundred pushups before you can do a hundred pushups, we have to define what a pushup is because if it's just bending your arms slightly, then there's a little bit of a difference between there. It's so your chest has to touch the ground. You have to lock your arms out all the way at the top. That's a pushup. Great. So if you're shorter, that's an advantage because your arms have less length. And so in that particular instance, that is an advantage towards the thing that you're doing. Therefore, you can harness that advantage to gain an upper hand and potentially increase the amount of skill developed towards that end because it naturally suits your advantage. So why would Zach Eady spend the time in practice to work on dribbling the ball between his legs or shooting a three-point shot when he can score 40 parking his ass near the near the rim. What's the need for him to actually quote, as your words, develop a game? Sounds like an excuse to me. There's no reason. It'd be spending time. Because in the NBA, he's going to get chewed up because he doesn't have a skill set. It, it's, it, it works for him in college because he's bigger than everyone. He's, he's, if, I, I, hope, I hope that DJ Burns, it's going to be a great matchup. I'm guessing... Purdue may win, and then him and Donovan Klingham will be a great matchup. Seven, seven, two, whatever, however big he is versus seven, four. It's going to be a great matchup because how many seven foot plus guys has are also 300 pounds? Like, that yeah, are the, yeah, that he's because Ta Taco yeah. Fall was seven, whatever, but he was, I mean, he's a, built a like a praying pole. mantis. Yeah. So is that, a, is that a, an, 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 just an inherent advantage too? Yeah. Just having strength. Is that an advantage? Just not a skill. I mean, you, you can work on your strength. Yeah. So that's 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 a skill. That's like Bo Jackson. So that's a skill. Was strong so he's he's strong. So there's at least something. So being but, length okay, with so strength. We have, we have one but, thing put and to his shooting percentage, but, but like, free, like, free throw capacity, but like, passing. But like for me, for me, kicking. Like I wasn't just born a good. Like I had to work at it. I, that was a skill set that I developed. And it, I wasn't 
I wasn't a good kicker because I'm I'm six foot. I I, I understand that. So I, I I could I could work on my kicking. But I could work I just, on my accuracy. I could. I, 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 again, it feels like the root of this is that the definition of a good basketball player that you guys have. I'm not saying he's bad. Yeah, that's the, that's where you're getting confused. I think we're not saying he's a bad basketball player. By I'm, any sa- means. I'm saying what makes him good is that he's he's huge. But Which, I, but 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 I don't think he has a skill set that makes him good. I think what makes him good is that he's big. It's using that sk- using that advantage to your advantage, right? If you have an inherent advantage, if there's just a guy that's walking around, there's probably more people. There's, I mean, not a lot of seven pe- seven foot four people that are walking around, but there are more seven foot four players that exist that are not Zach Eady. So he then has an advantage, and then you say, "How can I best use this advantage?" Usain Bolt has really long legs and some fast twitch muscle that makes him faster. How do I use this advantage? to be the best possible thing that I can be and harness that advantage. So then being tall naturally lends itself to having a game that benefits being tall. Being a short CrossFitter generally then makes it better and you work on the things that you can win, the events that are beneficial to short people. Something like climbing a rope, not beneficial when you're short. So you just have to mitigate that amount of weakness and don't take a last place in that particular event but you need to be good at the stuff that you're short. A basketball player who is seven foot four, who's always been taller, you're eventually going to run into people that are sort of near as, as tall as you are, kind of, sort of. And so you should develop a skill set that is around being tall. If he was at seven four, again, spending time away from developing that game and harnessing that advantage and shooting Steph Curry, Caitlin Clark, 38 foot threes, why? What's the point? Will he you- ever, will, should he ever take the ball up the court? Would it be beneficial for him I'm to not saying that. take the ball, bring yes, the ball, feed oh, him the rock 99% of the time? <laughs> I, I, I'm why, that. why would he bring the ball down ever? Do, if you have such an advantage, why would you ever incorporate something that brings the ball down to your waist where someone else can get it? So all of your game should be in maximizing that advantage that you have. What reason, what world makes sense for Zach Eady to, quote, develop a game when his game of dribbling the ball, shooting, bringing it away from the basket, takes away from the inherent advantage that he has. It's, it's bully ball. It's, it's bully ball. Because which is, it's, but it's what we talked about with, with Audi. And that, that's why I think that DJ Burns is going to bully him right back. You, you, do you remember when Yao Ming came into the NBA? Yeah. He stunk. He stunk. He wasn't good. He was, he was good because he was huge. Then he developed a game and he was, he was better. He was respectable. He got blocked by Nate Robinson. People Isn't forget. Isn't he yes, Hall of so is he good? Yeah. Right away though, he wasn't good. So you're saying that he was able to harness an advantage when he was growing up. And then until he, he was had a pressed, skill set. he could shoot and stuff. But apparently he didn't. Right? You guys said he sucked right away. I didn't say he sucked. Again, you said you did. You I said he was he said he was awful. He wasn't good. He wasn't good. Great. So he wasn't good. And so he had this he was, advantage. He was good for being he, big. He had this advantage growing up. So all, all you're saying right now advantage. is Zach Eady isn't good right now. Is based off yes, what Grant that, and I are that, saying. That is what I'm saying. I'm saying that the Zach Eady is going into the NBA as like a Yao Ming. He's gonna get, he's gonna get his lunch stolen, stuffed into a locker, and had his girlfriend taken from him the first year or two in the NBA because he doesn't have a skill set. Once he develops a skill set, once he develops a, a shot outside of two feet, he, he's gonna be better. I still think just the lane in the NBA and the rules as far as like offense and where uh, defense is guarded. I don't know. The, in, every, in, in the, the rules NBA, in the NBA, in the NBA you, you have just, disincentivized you having a big out. guy. Yeah. In the NBA, you can't just camp out in the lane. He can right now. He can stake off his guy five feet and then just block out the sun by standing in the lane. I still just... I, I, I understand that you're saying that he's not, quote, skilled enough, but I still don't understand why it would be beneficial for him to develop those quote skills when it would be detrimental to his current game. So he has no skills, what you're saying? No, you're saying there's no skills. Yeah, that's what I'm you using said. your words. Yeah, you just said it, not me. <laughs> that was you. <laughs> I, I said the words that you said. I didn't, they're not my words, that they're your like words. Me. <laughs> so, so, so he can't pull over any further. But Jeff, you, you, so you're saying that his, his skill set has been honed and developed around what makes him inherently good, which is his size. Yes. Okay. So then you take that advantage and you make that advantage the biggest advantage that you possibly can. What, what is his advantage? The advantage is that he's tall. Yes. His size. And how is that a bad thing? It's Why not. is this a bad We're thing? It's not a bad thing. We're not saying it. Oh is. my God. So yes, he is tall. Yes. His skill set benefits him being tall. 
His skill set is, if you compare him to Steph Curry, he doesn't have ball handling and shooting capacity of a Steph Curry. Is it, but he doesn't need to. Because he doesn't need to. There is no incentive for Zachy Eady, both from personal success in the current game and NIL and whatever is going to get as much attention, and winning, there is no incentive for him to work on anything other than being five feet away from the basket and shooting free throws. Do you know what he said after the game? What? He, he was like, I, basically, he's like, I've, I'm uh, paraphrasing here. I've kept receipts of the coaches who said I couldn't do X, Y, Z when they were recruiting me. Like Rick Barnes, he said that I, I wasn't going to, whatever it was. They saw he didn't have a skill set, that his skill set was that he's just big. The dude that he couldn't, he didn't have the, the up and under dips to do those. He didn't have a jump shot. All he had was the baby hook and being 7 4. His team's in the final four. Scored 40 points. He's on every leaderboard. Yes. Again, you can't say that he's not a good player. And yes, I'm he's saying good. he's not good. We never said that. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying let's it take, up. Let's you're saying take it, take it, take it to Twitter. We got to get a poll. So this, if we're, you're we're, saying we're, that we're he's only good, if he's only good because he's tall, yes. then everyone who's seven four would be exactly like Zach Eady. Everyone who is tall, everyone who has ever been seven foot four or taller has taken their team to the final four. I th- no, I think it's in between. I think I, oh, I, oh, I, oh, 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 you're walking back your statement. No, no, I, I'm not saying well, it's, it's, it's about it's Zach more, It's not about everyone else. It's more in between. Than but, it if, is. but if the only advantage is being tall, if that's it, if the only advantage is being tall, then everyone who is that tall is that good. It's, it's more, it's more in between than he's really skilled and he's, and he's big. I am, I am leaning more towards he is, he is good because he's big, not he's good because he's skilled. It's, he's good because his skill is built around him being big. That's the point. He is, his game is styled of the fact that he is the biggest person on the floor. And you then take that advantage, harness it to its absolute maximum. And then you're really good because your skill set has grown off the tree of being really tall. So he's good because he's big is what you're saying. You guys are idiots. I think we're talking in circles here. We got to, let's, let's take it, take it to, take it to Twitter. Let's get a poll going. Maybe Facebook, whatever. I don't understand. I, it's an inherent advantage to be tall in basketball. That's not a bad thing. You then build a skill set on being tall. I, I, I think it'll be really, I think that my theory will be proven correct. If, if DJ Burns is able to get him off the block because Zach Eady is not comfortable away from the block. His Zach Eady's game is posting up and then just being a freight train in, you know, around two feet. If you look at his shot chart, like 85% of his shots are, are dunks or just like right there. Yeah. At the hoop. I think what happened to me, I think what happens is Drew, I, Drew Davis love the guy. He is, he is dominant in basketball because he was six, eight, 300 pounds when we played like intramurals or whatever. I think to me, and what he had, happens he had soft hands. I was also very sweet, man. Uh, just, uh, his birthday was a couple days ago. Oh, just, just now Drew. teddy bear. Happy birthday, Drew. One of, one of the salts of the earth. Um, so the, what I think happens is I think one of the, what DJ Burns does uh, is he is only good because he's big. If that's if we're taking the parts, if we're, if we're reducing everybody to just their one one thing that they're good at. I haven't watched enough about him, so I don't know if he has a jump shot or not. But he's he's, Some, he's he's a big dude, somewhat. But is going to get within about six to eight feet and hit a turnaround, and he's got reasonably quick feet, but he's also longer and stronger than everybody that he's going to be playing against. So he can back down somebody who's skinny and he can, uh, if somebody's just strong, he can then shoot over them. If it's more like the KJ Adams type. Uh, so Edie is both tall and strong. And so I don't think he's going to be able to back him down or shoot over him. And the length that Edie has for his defense, he's not going to have to come down. He's still, if, if, DJ Burns is 6'9", 6'10". Zach Eady still has half a foot on him, 7'4". Which is crazy. And arm length to go forever. And when you are that good, or when you're that tall, and then work your game around that, he doesn't have to come down to block a shot. So you guys are saying he doesn't play defense, he just puts his hands up in the air. Okay, well that's 10 feet up in the air. You now have to shoot over 10 feet to get to 10 feet. And so DJ Burns is going to have to go underneath Zach Eady and Zach Eady won't have to come down to block that shot. So he should be able to stay out of foul trouble for the most part, where someone of equivalent height, in order to block that shot, either has to go try and go straight up or kind of swat through it. And him trying to swat through it is going to be where you get in the arms. That's why Edie stays out of foul trouble, because he can just stand there and put his hands up. And then I, would be curious. I don't think that Burns can do that on the other side. So when Edie goes to do drop step or when he goes to actually get post position, in order to block a shot... Burns is going to have to go up, and the only thing he's going to be able to reach 
is Zach Eady's arms, therefore drawing a foul. So I think Burns is going to get in foul trouble because Eady's going to put him in foul trouble, which then throws the entire game plan off. So I think Burns is going to get, you know, like 16, 18, something like that. I think Edie's going to go for like 30 plus nope. just because he's going to he's going to push Burns to the bench because of the way that Burns is going to have to defend him because they don't have they have the Middlebrooks kid is the other guy for NC State is the only one, the other one that's or Diara is another kind of the skinnier guy who's more of a jumper so they have Diara and Middlebrooks and DJ Burns DJ Burns is really the only guy who can physically match up with him Diara kind of sort of maybe but he's skinny you're going to get into a situation where the only guy they can guard him is DJ Burns, and DJ Burns is going to be in th get three fouls or whatever. I, and I, I, you're I, going to have to take him off the bench. I think Edie ends up with like 30 and 12, and Purdue, I think NC State's guards and supporting cast, I like him more, but Edie is that dominant. I think Purdue wins in like a 78 to 70 style game where they just pull away at the end because Edie and his, and the way he plays is going to put burns and or diara in foul trouble and they're going to have to get him off the bench and then it's no stopping him from there i think uh ed's going to go for uh 23 and 11 um but i th i think i think dj burns will I, I don't know i haven't watched the big 10 enough um but i i don't know if zach ed has gone against someone who is who weighs as much as him who is 300 pounds is a big dude for basketball played illinois who, who do they got though dane danger he's yeah. not he's not he's not he's, he's the same size as dj burns I don't think he's quite as skilled as DJ Burns. Yeah, he's not the same skill, but he's the same size. Um, I, I could see DJ Burns going up into Zach Eady and Eady you know, kind of coming down, drawing fouls that way. I don't know. Should be a great matchup either way, though. I think you guys are insane. Okay. Aiden, we got to take it. Take a pull. I think right, that's it. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. I'm All not right. crazy. Let's, let's crazy. wrap it up here. We got we got over 1,100 people watching this, so thank you, everyone, who's uh, tuning in. Um, and if you guys have not ever stuck around to this long, uh, to the end of the episode, thank you to all of our loyal listeners who are still listening. And as always, remember, Adapt.